What's up, YouTube? I just got a contract to make this casting, and in order to do that, I have to use that machine over there. Before you came round, my heart would never be much if I started. Before you came round, I was ready to slow down. Before you came round, I was heading for a small disaster. Ready to blow me down Now that machine is so accurate that you could take one of your hairs, slice it into 50 pieces, and it could still measure smaller than that. Now this is a timing cover for a Hemi big block engine. The customer has a complaint. See how that circle right here is not in line with this circle? That's a problem. So we have to fix that and redesign the whole tooling. So this is a vlog. You're not gonna see the entire thing in this episode, but in the future you will see the pattern and the molds that are made from this and casting the metal and then eventually machining it. But that'll be future videos. Now, if you're familiar with CNC machines or 3D printers, you're probably thinking that it calculates how far it moves based on, you know, the rotation per inch of a false thread or a gear. And that's half right, but actually, it's more accurate than that. This machine has what's called glass scales. And basically, it's just a piece of glass that has laser etched lines in it. There's, there's literally millions of lines in this little tiny piece of glass. And there's a sensor in there that's highly accurate that reads each and every line that passes by it. And by doing that, it's able to know how far it is in any which direction in the XYZ coordinates. Once the probe touches a piece of the part, it sends a signal to a sensor that calculates the diameter of the probe, how long the probe is, the deflection that the probe moved when it touched, and then it calculates all of those dimensions and generates a 3D model on your computer. Now this machine is really old, so it doesn't exactly design 3D models, it's mostly 2D stuff, but the newer machines can even have uh, 3D scanning heads on them that will actually use an entire laser beam and it will scan across the entire part generating a 3D model. And, but today we're not going to be doing anything that cool. We're just going to be touching some holes and calculating the XYZ positions of them so that I can design the model accurately. Now the machine doesn't have any idea where that part is in three-dimensional space. You have to teach it. So we have to touch the first board, touch the second board, set a plane, then set a axis of rotation inside the big board, and then tell it that one of the axes aligns between that board and the small board. Once we set those coordinates, all we have to do is touch off all the other holes in the machine will tell us the XY position of the holes. And also we have uh, like one or two planes we have to calculate for a Z height. But after that, we're pretty much done and we'll head off to the 3D design software. Now you might be saying, Garen, I don't have access to a $30,000 semen machine. How can I do this myself? Well, I'm going to show you. All you need is a smartphone and some dial calipers. We're going to be doing a process called photogametry. Photogametry is a process where you take a bunch of photos of a part around the object in 360 degree space, upload that, those photos into a software that digitizes them and cr creates a 3D model off of just those photos. It's, it's a really impressive process if you know how 3D scanning works. It's, um, typical 3D scanning is extremely expensive. But uh, today, all you need is 
a smartphone. I'm going to be using my RX100, which is a camera that allows me to control the ISO and the shutter speed, which is important. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. There's a few different softwares you can use. There's Aegisoft Photo Scan, uh, Reality Capture, and then Autodesk Remake. Those are the big three softwares that you can use. I'm going to be going with Autodesk, and I talked about this a little bit in episode two, buying a 3D design software. I know Autodesk, they're a fantastic company. They, they're one of the founding fathers of 3D modeling. They have all kinds of softwares, so I trust the company in knowing that it's going to be an accurate and reliable product and service. On top of that, it's a cloud-based service, which means I can upload my photos to the cloud. The cloud will process it for me so it's not tying up my computer because I've got work and stuff to do. This process can be very CPU intensive. It can take a long time. So if you have a slow computer, I would recommend checking out Autodesk. All right, quick lessons in 3D scanning. There's a few things you need to know about and be aware of before you do this. Any kind of 3D modeling of a physical object with lasers or photos, whatever, it absolutely hates shiny surfaces because all these softwares and all these pieces of equipment work by bouncing light off of an object and then reading the amount of time it takes to get back to the object. Uh, photo is a little bit different, it uses triangulation, but um, that totally screws up when you have a shiny surface because it's, the light's going to hit the surface and then bounce off and not hit the sensor correctly and then the models will be all screwed up. Um, it's, it's a nightmare. If you don't care about damaging or painting the part that you're doing, just spray paint it and then uh, take a brush with some water-based paint Preferably a high contrast, so if you paint the base like white, you want to use a black contrast and just splatter paint on it, like a, take the brush and just flip it at the part. And this creates a whole bunch of little dots on the part. And these dots will be used from the 3D design software to triangulate and figure out where everything's at in 3D space. And it's a, it's a really good, accurate way to do things. However, if you don't want to paint your part or can't for whatever reason, which I couldn't do it on this part, so instead, you can see, I used water-based face paint, and I just took a paper towel, dipped it in the paint with some water, rubbed it, it'll come right off as soon as I touch it. That's a really effective way to do this without painting your parts. You can also buy aerosol powder that is specifically made for 3D design and scanning. You just spray it, and it's a powder that coats the part, and then you just blow it off after it's done. And The second thing you need to know is, again, with reflective surfaces, you can use a polarizing lens with your camera, which, to not get super technical with it, a polarizing lens removes all the reflective and shiny surfaces in your photo, which helps with photogametry. Third, which again was with light, you don't want to use a spotlight. You want what's called diffuse lighting. This is a spotlight, whereas that is a diffuse light. The only difference is that has a light or a lampshade on it, which the light hits the lampshade and the diffuses out, which it makes a much softer and a more uniform coverage of the light. Here's my setup that I'm going to be shooting with. This isn't the best possible setup, even though I'm not too worried about it with this part. And on top of that, the farther you can get your light source away from your part, the more the light will diffuse around it. And lastly, you want to think about the background that you're shooting in. It's best to have a flat background and not a chaotic background with a lot of random pieces and stuff in it because the way softwares typically process images, and I'm not 100% sure on this with photogametry, but usually what they do is they chunk the picture. So they'll take a section of it, look at it, look at all the pixels in that section, and then move on. And then they'll find patterns with all of the photos and then they connect the patterns and that's how it creates the 3D model. If you have a lot of random stuff in the background, it's gonna take longer to process that image because it's trying to look at everything that's different. However, if you have a flat background that's totally white, it's just gonna look at it, see it's all white, move on, and it allows it to speed up and process the images faster, which will have a faster render time, which saves you time so you don't have to sit there and wait. But while it is the fastest to have a flat, uh, neutral background, it's most accurate to have a slightly variable background. You can either draw squiggly lines or spray paint brush stuff on it or use like a wood grain. That will allow it to see those patterns and process the image better to have a higher quality resolution when it creates the 3D model. However, it will take more processing time. <laughs> if you want to learn more about photogrammetry, check out this video in wherever that thing pops up or down in the description below I'll have a link and on top of that I'll have a blog post that you can check out that talks about how to properly paint and color translucent or reflective objects. Now once you have your photos uploaded and your 3D model rendered there's a few things you need to know about 3D modeling before. Now there's three types of modeling. There's a few other types but the three main ones are parametric modeling, 
mesh modeling and NURB surface modeling. And they all work a little different. Mesh modeling is what this model currently is as soon as it gets digitized. It's a bunch of triangles that are meshed together and each point is a vertex and the vertex has an XYZ position. This type of modeling is really good for say do, doing sculpting or uh, making characters for video games. It's a very popular process. However, mesh modeling is absolutely horrible for what we're trying to do which is make dimensional round objects and setting the lengths and setting the depths and stuff. It's You can't create like flat surfaces and it's very restricted. The second modeling process is parametric modeling, which is metric based modeling. You set a length of a part, you can set the height of a plane, you can cut a hole this size through the part. It's how this should be properly modeled. And the last one is NURB surfaces modeling, which we don't have to get into explaining what it is, but basically it's just surfaces. They aren't solid models, they're just like curves and stuff. To Simplify it. They're basically a cross between uh, parametric modeling and mesh modeling. Not exactly. We don't need to worry about that today. So we need to take this mesh model and convert it into a parametric model so that I can create the circles and the dimensions that I need to be. So when I create the blueprints for the machining and the pattern making and print it out with a 3D printer, it's all dimensionally accurate and correct. All right, so the first thing we need to do is import the model into the software, which it's actually a really easy process. You just hit insert, insert mesh. Select the Hemi timing cover and there's our model. So the first thing you have to do is turn off the tree configuration, which another quick lesson in 3D design, most modeling softwares that are parametric will have a tree-based configuration. So, you know, if you draw a cylinder, that cylinder will be a feature over here in like a tree base. And then you draw another cylinder off of that cylinder and it's got the next little step that you did. And it, it records what you do through time. So then you can like backtrack and change little things around. There's pluses and minuses for turning it off or turning it on. We're not gonna get into that today. It's a very complicated process. What you do is just right click on the unsaved model that you're using. Actually, let me save this real quick. All right, so the model is still a dumb model, but it has about 100,000 vertices in it. And we need to reduce that. So what we're going to do is just right click on the model, hit edit. And now we're in the mesh mode, which is, you can see right here, mesh mode. And what we need to do is do a reduction or a reduce model. So select the model. Triangulate mesh. So now it's triangular. You can see all the vertices. This is way too much data points for this software to handle. Select the part, so now all the vertices are selected. Well, not, not all of them. Actually, make sure selection filter, select through. Now you can select all of the vertices on the part. All right, now everything is selected. Go to modify, reduce, density, face count. Do 9,500. 9, Preview, okay, there we go. Now it's looking a lot cleaner. It, it's, it looks low poly, but you can see the bores and stuff, they look a lot more round and cylindrical. They're not, there's not all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And it looks good. So now we just need to convert it into a solid model. So it's, it's still mesh based, it still has all the little triangles, but we're gonna convert it into something that we can work with for parametric modeling. So finish the mesh, hit OK. Now you're gonna right click and hit do not capture design history. Okay, so it's gonna warn you, it's gonna destroy all the stuff that you did, so you're not gonna be able to roll back anything that you just did after you hit OK, which is fine, it's just a model, or it's just a mesh model, it's not a big deal, and we have the original mesh that we can import in again if we need to. Hit continue, so now we have no design configuration. Right click and hit mesh to B rep. B rep is it's another form of modeling like parametric modeling or mesh modeling or surface nerve modeling. I'm not gonna explain it, it's not a big deal or it's not important. Just do mesh to B rep, new body, hit OK, and now it's converting. And now it's a parametric based model. You know, it still has all the triangles, but we can do stuff with this now. And it looks really rough, but we're gonna clean it up. So the first thing is we, we, we need to clean up this bottom face. So we're going to do a quick sketch 
on the bottom plane here. Let's lift it through the tree. Okay. Create a rectangle. Extrude the rectangle. Select it one side and we're going to change it from to cut. And what this is going to do is just barely clean up that face. Negative 0.5. There we go. That's pretty much cleaned up. So now that's a flat surface. We can do all kinds of stuff with this, this surface. So now I could put a circle right here at the center line. Whatever the bore is, I don't know what it is, but we'll measure that in a minute. And I can, you know, create it, extrude, extrude that circle, all cut, and then there's our bore. Now it's all screwed up, but and the the bore's off, but this is the point. It's it's now a parametric model that I can draw dimensional objects off of and use that to create a model that we'll be using for to print out on the 3D printer that will then be used to make the pattern that will make the castings that will then use the castings to load onto a CNC machine, give some blueprints to a machinist who is going to program the machine to cut the part, and then we'll have a finished part. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up this part, get it all ready, and then, uh, and then I'll show you 3D printing. That'll probably be another video at a different time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.